Hello everyone, welcome to today's DIY video in which I will show you how I made this bucket bag. In addition to wearing the bag over one shoulder, you can wear it also as a backpack. The bag has some practical details such as an inside pocket for a phone or tissues and a strap with a snap hook on it so that I don't have to look for my keys. Yet another practical part is the double loop on the back side. This part allows me to close or open my bag within seconds. I used one of my plates as a pattern for the shape of my bottom piece because it had the ideal size. A simple plastic folder will make the bottom pieces stable. I outlined the plate on the plastic folder and cut it out. I used two layers in total and stapled them together. For the actual bottom piece I used the same pattern, but I added about half an inch or more for the seam allowance. Then I placed the plastic pieces inside of two layers of velvet, nice sides always facing away from the plastic. I pinned the fabric pieces together. The next step was to sew around the plastic part. The bottom piece for the lining has the exact same size. The side part of the back is a rectangle, measurements are in the info below. The lining is also a rectangular shape but a little bit shorter and there is a stripe of velvet that is on the top. You'll find measurements for both pieces also in the info below and also for the inside pocket uh, that is made of one piece of velvet with interfacing and one piece of lining. For the inside pocket I placed the rectangle cut out of lining on the nice side of the velvet and I pinned everything together. I used flizzeline also on the side part of the bag. I already made my band for the snap hook, it is slightly longer than I will use, but the measurements are also in the info below. First I had to find the perfect position for my band with the snap hook and then I decided how long I want it to be. I decided it's supposed to be a little bit higher, so I cut the back of the band away. Then I added the velvet stripe on the lining and started pinning everything together. I sewed everything together and my lining was ready for placing the pocket on it. When I sewed together the pieces for the pocket I left a little opening so that I can turn it and I also clipped away the edges because it's easier to shape the pocket once you turn it. Once the pocket was turned I found the opening and folded the fabric inside and put several pins in it. I sewed it together and then I found the perfect place on my lining for my pocket. I pinned uh, the three sides of the pocket on and then I sewed through. I folded the lining and pinned the sides together. As a next step I have sewn the side uh, together on a sewing machine and then I added the bottom piece. Then of course, once I was done with the pinning, I have sewn everything together. And this is how the finished lining looked like. Next I found the perfect position for my signature wolf crest and pinned it on with several pins. It is an iron-on patch, but I like to sew it on in addition to ironing on for more security. Next I pinned together the sides of uh, this piece for the back and then I folded a stripe of velvet uh, for the loop and for the double loop. Measurements are in the info below. Again I pinned the piece together and then I have sewn around both long sides. 
I measured the necessary length for my bottom loop, pinned it on the bottom piece of my bag and I sewed it on. Then I pinned the bottom piece on the side part of the bag. When I was sewing those pieces together I had to be a bit careful on the place where the loop is because the fabric is thicker there so I had to go a bit slower on my machine. Both of my main parts were ready so I could put the velvet part inside of the lining. I aligned both pieces as they should be and started pinning around the upper edge. And then I sewn the pieces together and left an opening so that I can turn the parts to the good side. I made sure that everything is in place and then I found the opening and folded the fabric inside and started putting in pins around the upper edge. And then once again I have sewn through, uh, this time a little bit closer to the edge. I'm going to turn the back over to the bottom back part, here you can see the loop. This is the place where I pulled the cord through and I started measuring the double loop. I placed a stripe of the fabric that was left from my bottom loop over uh, the cord and made sure that I have the right size. Then I folded the piece again and put in several pins and I have sewn through. Once that was done I could pull the cord through. I always find it helpful uh, wrapping around the ends of the cord a little bit of tape because it makes it easier to pull through the tight double loop. The double loop should be tight enough so that it holds the bag together but it shouldn't be too tight because you want to open and close it easily. Next I started measuring distance from the upper edge and between the holes for my grommets. Once I had all my markings, I could cut the holes with small scissors. I made sure that the size is everywhere equal and then I put in the grommets and hammered them on. So once I was done and all the grommets were on, I could take the end pieces of the cord and pull them through the grommets. I have in total 12 grommets, which means the half of the amount is an even number. With an even number I will pull the last parts of my cord on the front, on the outside, but if you want to have your cord rather on the inside, then the half of the entire amount of your grommets should be an odd number. I tied uh, the cord on the front. Now that the bag was secure, I could easily use the double loop to for closing and opening the bag. And all that was left was putting on the end pieces, so I cut the cord back and wrapped again around a tape. And I wrapped it so that at the end there was like an inch of just a tape and it was slightly pointier, because the end pieces were very tight and it was difficult to pull otherwise the cord through. Once I managed to pull the cord through, I uh, took scissors, uh, cut back the rest of the cord that was showing and glued the end piece on. Let's have a look at some details of the back. Here we have our uh, band with the snap hook. This is the detail of the front part of the cord, now with the end pieces on, as you can see. Here we have the back side of the back with the bottom loop. And of course our double loop that allows us to close or open the bag quickly. If you're going to make this bag, I would suggest use any material that is rather stiffer and don't forget to use a very stiff flizzoline to iron on on the back side of your fabric because that makes your bag so much more stable. Of course, you could add additional details uh, such as pockets on the outside or more inside pockets or whatever you want to. 
Since I'm mostly wearing my organizer with all the cosmetic stuff, um, I didn't need more than just one pocket. I mostly use just one pocket um, for my phone and for me it's always important to have this strap uh, for my keys because then I don't have to look for them and other, one, other than that I don't find it necessary but that is entirely up to you. So this is it, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope it was helpful for you. If yes, don't forget to leave a comment or a thumb up. Don't forget to check out the info below this video because I put together all the measurements and some info I thought that might be helpful to you and there is also a link uh, to my DIY playlist for you guys and you can also always visit me on Facebook, Instagram and on my webpage. I would be also very happy if you subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet and thank you so so much for watching and see you next time, bye!